Hello, this is LJ Boffo with a Microsoft Excel video on pivot tables. We're just going to learn how to make a really basic pivot table and look through it for a few things that we can do to make changes to it. Now, what are pivot tables? In Excel, you're essentially creating and or importing lots and lots of data on various things. You might import things from a database, from other Excel files. You may create them from scratch, etc. And Excel allows you all sorts of ways to condense that information, to uh, filter it, to sort it, to add conditional formatting, different ways to look at the information. But one really powerful way is how you can summarize that information. In a way, a table is a way that information is summarized, depending on how you filter it or sort it. But tables could be really long. They can have hundreds to thousands of rows, and they could have dozens of columns. And what if you just want to look at a table, such as the one I've got on the screen now, that has several rows and has you know, uh, uh, hundreds, potentially hundreds, of rows of records? Well, a pivot table is a great way to do that. So as time has gone on, Microsoft has made it easier and easier to do. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the Insert tab, which is where you can add a pivot table based on just creating something from scratch with no qualifications to it, and then start making choices yourself. Or we can look at piv uh, recommended pivot tables, which is what I'm going to do here, because I already have a table of data, and I want to see what Excel recommends I could do with it. And actually, I don't have a physical table object, per se. This is simply a data range. You can make pivot tables from data ranges like this or from um, Excel table objects. Either way is just fine. But what I'm doing is I'm selecting everything in the table, including the header row. As you can see, it kind of goes on and on and on. It's going to go a little faster. There we are. So this is my selection of data, including the header row. You want to make sure that you always include your header row because a pivot table needs that in order to determine what the different fields or columns and what the different records or rows mean. And then you come over to the Insert tab and you click on Recommended Pivot Tables. And Excel will offer a variety of options depending on the kind of data you select. So if I had only selected a couple of columns here, some there may have been no pivot tables possible. If I had a table only full of data but no numbers, it would be awfully difficult for Excel to figure out what it's going to calculate and summarize for me in terms of a grand total or percentages or so on. So in this case, we could do a variety of things, a sum of sales by category. So that would likely include the sales in the category of this particular series of products. Or it could do a sum of sales by region. So it could look at the region and the sales. And instead of, of collapsing this table by hiding rows and filtering things out, we could grab that really quickly. We can look at a sum of sales by subcategories which may or may not be useful depending on what your client wants. We could look at a sum of sales by sales rep, etc. What I'm going to do right now, oh, and then there are other things. If you don't want to use the actual data of sales, then you could do a count of things because that's about all you could really do with text, which is what most of this table um, is. You can either sort things, uh, if you will, by the date, or you can you know, summarize it by the sales. Or if you just want to work with the text, then you can do a count of how many sales reps there are or how many products a sales rep sold, uh, you know, that sort of thing. What we're going to do is do something really simple, a sum of sales by region. We're going to click this, and what will happen is that Excel will actually just automatically create a new sheet. You can always cut and paste this information onto your existing sheet, but since that existing sheet's got a lot of information in it, let's not do that. Instead, let's just go rename this Sales Pivot. And just because I like things tidy, I want my pivot tables to be after my main table, so I'm just moving that over. 
And I, as you notice, I, I just picked up the tab and dragged it over. So this is a very basic pivot table. What this pivot table has done um, in opening it, Excel opened up a default a pivot table fields uh, panel over here. When you click on the pivot table, you can see that there's a pivot table analyze tab with a ribbon, which has a few things that you could do in it. It also has a design so that you could change the color of your pivot table if we wanted to come over here and look at it in oranges and, and such. We could do that. Um, you could determine if you do or don't want to see the row headers, but that will matter only if we actually make more things that we're going to pivot this table to. I'm going to keep the row headers on, even though we don't have any row headers in use at this point. Column headers, if I were to turn that off, it simply seems to change the color. It doesn't actually remove the headers, but let's keep them so they stand out. For the pivot table analyze, this gives us a chance to look at recommended pivot tables again to see if we want to choose something else. If for some reason I uh, close the pivot table fields and I want to see that again, I would come up to the pivot table analyze, look at show and choose field list and there's the field list again. So it's pretty easy to find. I could refresh this table if it came from a different table where I made changes. So right now I'm not going to do any of that. We just want to look at the basics. In the base, basic pivot table fields right now, only two items are selected in here. The region, which are these, and the sales in those regions. If I decided I wanted to not do the region, but the sales rep instead, I could unclick region and click sales rep. See? That's in part what a pivot table means. I'm pivoting from looking at the region to the sales rep. Or I might want to pivot to looking at the category and the sales. So in this company, there are four categories of products, whereas there are several regions or sales, several sales reps or a whole bunch of product names and so on. I'm going to go back to just region. Now over here, as you get more complex into what you need your pivot tables to do, you can set filters and you can um, add columns or change what the column heads are. Right now, the values are based on the numbers that will be calculated. So the values are like the numbers, the counts, the sort of thing. And here it's the sum of sales. In rows, right now we're looking at this so that the rows are showing records for each region. And then the columns, sorry, the columns are just default. Now, if I were to put re drag region up to columns, let's see what would happen. We could actually look at the table this way, but I'm not sure that it's terribly helpful to anyone. But that will be up to each person in their career training with what they're trying to apply pivot tables for. But in this case, it simply brings things wider rather than, than um, in columns. I'm going to go ahead and drag this back down to rows. But if you wanted, for instance, to add something else, so say you wanted to do <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> region and category, this is where we start seeing the row heading. So when we went back over here to design, the row headers, if those were off, it would just simply not show the color. But that's what is meant by row headers. So in this case, the actual table is primarily about the region which is what the rows are focused on, and then additional information of the uh, uh, category. Now, I could do this, and then from there, nope, that's, that's uh, oh, see, there we go. If I selected category first here, and then I selected region second, now the priority of the rows would be based on what region sold what in cookery, what region sold what in food. Or if I close these both down again, and then I started with region and then added category, I'd be looking at each region and what each region sold in cookery and food and ingredients and seasonings. So now things you could do in here. What's interesting is because the row labels can change, the pivot table 
by default doesn't state what the row label stands for. In this case, the row label pretty much stands for region. But if you're planning to, if you plan to keep changing the pivot table to do several things with it, you might want to just leave this alone to row labels. But say we wanted to do a uh, focus on this being the regions, then I could just overwrite this and type regions. And then that way, when I, I, I do my drop down here, I know exactly what I'm looking at here. I mean, I'll still see this even if it reads row labels, but it's just, you know, sort of when you're having someone look at the table, helps them understand clearly, well, what are the rows representing? What are the columns representing? What are the sub rows representing? And so on. So that's how that sort of thing works. And then with the sum of sales, right now, this is just showing up as straight numbers. You can individually come in here and you could format the cells in order to choose to add currency to it. Or you could go to your home tab and over to the number group and into where it reads general and then choose whether you want currency or accounting, that sort of thing. Or you could come down here where values is and let's take a look at the drop down. The drop down gets more and more complex depending on how much you work on pivot tables, but let's see what value field settings means. Value set, uh, field settings means what are you looking at here? At this point, we're looking at the sum of the original table data from the sales table. But you could do a count if you wanted to, or you could do an average of the sum or a max of the sum. So these various things are put in. We're going to leave it as sum. Show values as. In this particular case, we're not doing any calculations, but you could actually show the, the currency instead of a straight currency as a percent of the grand total. Let's take a look at what that means. I'm just going to click this, click OK. And right now, whatever the grand total of all the sales are at the end of this sales table, the West has done 14.44% of that those sales. Midwest has done 11.41% of those sales, etc. That's what's meant that you could make additional pivot decisions. Do you want to pivot from looking at currency to looking at percentages? Do you want to look at percentage of a specific column and so on? In here, I'm going to go ahead and go back to value field settings and where it reads, uh, and then go back to show values as and then I'm going to go back to no calculation, which just shows the straight amount of money, even though it's not in any particular format. And then I can come in here and I could select all of these. And I could come to the home tab, go to the general and put in accounting. And I could also decide to just leave the bottom ones here as not accounting, but only as commas so that it's just a little less cluttered looking. So you can still, it's, still tell it's part of currency, but it's a little less cluttered. You only see the, the, the actual region row in the currency format, and then you can see how it's broken up by different categories. Come down here. I know it's so strange to hear me pausing and not talking, right? So anyway, that's just a little bit about how a basic pivot table is made. And we'll look at some others in other videos. Thanks very much. I hope this was